Hi everybody, today we have an introduction to statistics charts. And what I'm going to cover with you are frequency distributions, relative frequency distributions, pie charts, bar charts, histograms, dot plots, stem and leaf, time plot, and scatter plot. My goal is to really do a lot of these in Excel, but there's a few things that are easier in a different program called Desmos, so I will flip back and forth between the two. So here are the problems I'm doing. It's similar to the module one, what's called the mini tab assignment, but you're allowed to use other things as well. So if you don't want to use mini tab, you can use Excel or Desmos as I'm going to show now. So I made some problems very similar to your assignment. So the first one says a group is considering opening a dog park in a community. They survey 15 people in the neighborhood to find out how many dogs they own. Use the data to answer the questions. So it first says create a tally of the data showing the counts and percentages. So when you look at this data set, it really doesn't show it at first, but when you highlight, it really is a table, which is going to be very useful. So I'm going to right click that table to copy it, and I'm going to paste it into Excel. To paste, you can right click and say paste, or you can hit control V. It kind of depends on how your computer is set up to which one's going to work for you. So now that I have my data in there, you have a couple things that you can do. You could really go really basic and say, um, you do the calculations yourself. So you write number of dogs and you type frequency. Um, to make these bigger, I'm just gonna double click and it will expand it. So you could type in here, people had zero dogs or one dog or two dogs three dogs, and you could go through and count it on your own, right? You could count how many times you see zero, how many times you see one, two, three. So if that's where you're at and that's what you want to do, that is perfectly okay. If I want Excel to do this for me, I'm going to highlight these places I would like the numbers to go, and I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to type frequency. And notice that Excel knows what I'm trying to do and tries to help me out. Then I highlight all the data. So here's all the data. I put a comma. And then I highlight where I want the numbers to go, and then I push Control Shift Enter, and it puts in the answers. The Control Shift Enter isn't completely necessary, but it's really helpful. If you don't hit Control Shift Enter, you might get an extra space in there, so it just makes it look pretty. And it told me two people had zero dogs, six people had one dog, four people had two, and three people had three. Now there's another thing that's really clever if you want to be even better than that. Let's go back and highlight those cells and you can hit analyze data. Excel will kind of think through it and tell you some stuff it thinks you want to know and see how one of them is this little count, rows count, and you could say insert pivot table. So the insert pivot table is the same thing, except notice it didn't name it. So you could come up here and you could name this and say this is number of dogs. And then you can say frequency. So you can manipulate the pivot table after it does it. Something that's nice about the pivot table as you're looking at it right now, um, it sorted it to what was most frequent, which was to have one dog. But you can go to this sort and you can say go smallest to largest, and then it looks like the one we had. So lots of choices for you, I like choices. Let's go back to our first sheet to say what else did we want to do? We wanted to do a relative frequency. So I type the word so I know what I'm calculating. Relative frequency says what percent of the data goes with each category. So to have Excel do math, you type equals, I'm going to click on the cell 2 and I'm going to divide by the total number we have, which was 15. And you could do that individually or you can grab the corner and just bring it down and it will repeat. So you always have the choice that if you want to go in and say you want to do equals and click on the 6 and divide by your number, which is 15, you can do that. But if you want to click and drag, that works too. So now I have my number of dogs, I have my frequency, I have my relative frequency. This answers the first part of the question, which said you're supposed to create a tally showing the counts and the percents, so we did that. The next thing it does is to make a pie chart, make sure you give it a title and make sure you show percentages. So I'm gonna stay here. I am going to just highlight 
the data values. I'm not going to include the title. We'll put the title on ourselves. So I just I just highlighted those two columns. Then I click insert and I really like to click on recommended charts. And you can see one of the charts that came up as a pie chart and I'm going to say OK. So right now we have a chart. It says give it an appropriate title. So we're going to call it number of dogs. Um, owned. That sounds good. Then to have it give percentages, and let me make that a little bigger so you can see it, I'm going to right click and I would like to add a data label. Now it's not going to do exactly what I want at first. I'm going to click on add data label and you can see I put in a number. A number is not what I want, I want a percent. So I'm going to go back and push this plus and on the data labels, see how it doesn't say percent? So I'm going to go to more. And in the more, I can see there's a percentage. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to get rid of the value because I don't really want that value. If you want to make the data labels bigger, just go to the home, click on the size that you want it. Let's say, let's try 18 so I can really read that. As you're doing this work, you're supposed to put your answers into a Word document. So let's look at that also. So I highlighted all of my data that I want to move over. I'm going to put some borders around it just to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to copy it and then back in my document I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to say paste to the picture so it looks the same. So there's my first one. The second one which was my pie chart. I'm just going to go back and do the same thing. I'm going to go to my Excel sheet. I'm going to right click copy I'm going to go back here and I'm going to right click and paste again. I'm going to pick picture that way it looks the way it looked on my Excel sheet and I don't have to try to format it. The next one says make a bar chart include the percentage for each category. Give it a title. So let's go back to our Excel and remember we have the docs and the frequencies already so let's see if we can just make another quick bar chart. So I'm going to say copy and I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to copy this. Copy. When I paste over here, I want to paste the numbers because I don't want to lose that there are percentages. I don't want it to try to do some kind of formula, so you have to be a little careful. If you ever get too confused, you can always just type the numbers back in. Don't really stress out about any of this. All right, so now that I have that done, I'm going to highlight it and say insert. And again, I like the recommended charts. That way it kind of gives me a preview and here is the preview. So let's hit OK. It's going to put it in the same sheet. You can move it out of the way if you want to. Just click it and drag it around. And you can say, I'm going to call it percent of surveyed that own X number of dogs. So by naming it this way, it shows that the X is that how many, what percent own zero, what percent own one, what percent own two, what percent own three. But you have some choices in how you label it, but you want it to be something that if you looked at the chart and you didn't create the chart, you would be able to follow it. So again, we're going to copy. I'm going to go back to my Word document and I actually want to probably go down a little bit and go to our next page so I can paste it. The next two questions are just what proportion have two dogs, what proportion has at least one. I think you can answer those just fine. Let's go back to data. So the next one says the price of gas has changed many times. The list below gives the average price per gallon of gas in the United States for the years 2000 to 2021 and note I intentionally left off 2022. We are going to construct a relative histogram for the prices. We're going to use bins of 1 to 1.49, 1.5 to 1.99, 2 to 2.49, 2.5 to 2.99, $3 to 3.49, and 3.50 to 3.99. We are going to label the vertical axis using relative frequencies. So let's talk about what a histogram is and a relative histogram. It's a lot like a bar chart, except it doesn't have spaces in between. The idea that there's bins here is there are a lot of data points and they aren't going to fit as nicely like our 0, 1, 2, 3 did. So to do the histograms and then even to do this dot plot, I'm going to use another program. It's not really a program. It's a website called Desmos. So I'm going to highlight all of this data. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going over to this website 
and it's just desmos.com calculator. You can Google Desmos and it'll come up. So here, once I'm into Desmos, I'm gonna click on the top thing and I'm gonna hit Control V. That's gonna bring those 21 prices in that we talked about. And the only thing I really need to do is give this a name so that I don't have to type any of those prices. So I'm gonna say A is equal to. This is gonna be great. You're just gonna type the word histogram. Then I put A in parentheses. It immediately draws something that looks like a bar chart, but the difference is there's no spaces in between the bars. So what we need to do is a little manipulation. There is a default here that says the bin width is one. So this says it goes from like 0 0.5 to 1.5 and 1.5 to 2.5. And we want that to be 0.5. So I'm just gonna type 0.5. So now it redid the bins. I'm gonna hit this zoom fit so that I can see it a little better. I'm also gonna have it go to the left. So now our prices go from one to 1.5, 1.5 to two, two to 2.5, 2.5 to three, and it looks better. So in the center, it didn't look like it was doing the one to 1.5, but if I go to the left, you can see it. So right now, this is our histogram. If we want a relative histogram, you hit the word relative, See how it kind of shrunk down, but all you have to do is hit this zoom fit and it fixes it for you. So now you can either use your snipping tool. When you do that, make sure you get the vertical axis on there so we can see the percentages. And then we can go back in here, hit control V and we can paste it in. Or if you want to, Desmos also has something that says share and part of the share is to export an image it will show you what it looks like and you can download it. So we did the first part, we made a relative histogram, then it says based on it, what is the range of prices that was most common? So you can see most common were two here, so between two and three dollars was the most common price for gas, which I know we wish we were all back in those days. Part C says make a dot plot. So like a histogram, a dot plot is really just type in dot plot. Also tell it A. It also says bin width, so I'm gonna go in and say 0.5 so it matches like we had before. And then I'm gonna say bin, so it's important that we tell it to put it in the bin. I'm gonna turn off the histogram for now, and then I'm gonna hit zoom fit so you can see there's the dot plot. Dot plot is just a series of dots, so it's exactly what it says it is. If you wanna go to the left, you can, that way it looks more like what we had it before so that we're doing the same thing on both. And let's go back to the histogram, put it on count. So I can put it overlaid on there and you can see that they do the same thing. So it's just a difference of a histogram looks like a bar chart without any space in between and a dot plot looks like a bunch of dots. So let's turn that off. Let's go back to our snipping tool. Say that I want to make a new one. And I am going to make sure that I capture the vertical axis so I can see what was going on. I'm gonna go back to my Word document. So pasting it, I hit Control V. If you don't have a snipping tool, then I would say make sure you use what Desmos has built in, which would be to export the picture. The next thing it says is make a stem and leaf plot for the prices. Stem and leaf is not in Desmos. It is not in Excel either, but I don't think stem and leaf is something you're going to use very often. So I think there's no harm. And just taking the numbers from the data set. So let's copy them. Let's go over here and let's paste them. So that is control V so I can paste them in. I can help myself out a little if I just go ahead and sort them. So let's go smallest to largest. And the stem really says like, what's your major unit? So I can say I have $1, $2, and $3. So I'm gonna put one, two, and three. The leaf is then the decimal places. So 44, 53, 56, 64, 92. So see, I just put the decimals in. Then I go back and I do the same thing with $2. With the 220, make sure you write two zero so that you really show it's 20 cent. Then you have 24, 34. Now 34 is there twice, so you wanna write it twice. Then I have 40, 47, 51, 
64, 70, again put the zero, 79, I know this is long, 84, 85, let's go back over now that I've gone too many spaces, and that's it for the twos. Okay, for the threes, I had 28, 32, 43, 58. So here's all of my data that I need for that. To put a little line there, I'm just gonna highlight this and I'm gonna tell it only to do the right border. So this is here. I'm going to make these a little smaller, kind of drag them over. And this is just to keep them all kind of organized. So when I move them back to my Word document, I can see them all at once. All right, so once I had all the numbers there, I put my right side on. I kind of gathered them up together so I can see them. I am just going to highlight all my cells, say copy, go back over to Word, and look where it says to make a stem and leaf. And I'm going to hit Control V, and that's going to paste it. All right, then it says, how would you describe the shape of this distribution? So look at this shape. I would say it looks kind of bell-shaped. If I had to draw on it, which I could, it would look kind of like a bell, right? And there's some common things you see in statistics, and let me show you the common shapes. So this is kind of like the one I just showed you. This is symmetric, kind of bell-shaped. Left skew is when there's more on the left. Right skew is when there's more on the right. Symmetric, like the bell, about the same on both sides. Uniform is kind of like a square where it kind of looks the same all the way across, so kind of flat. And then bimodal is this kind of V where I kind of see maybe two bell shapes. So when you look at your data, just say the closest that it looks like to you, and this would be a good indication of what to select from so that you don't have to make up a shape of your own. The next one then adds a second column of data. So this is the exchange rate between the United States and Brazil. And it can be stated as the number of Brazilian dollars reais that can be purchased for $1. So these are the values from 2008 to 2020. We're gonna make a time plot of the data and then we are going to kind of look at it overall to see when is it the highest, when did it look like it declined the most. So like we've done everything else before, I'm just going to highlight everything. So I'm highlighting the years and the exchange rate. I'm going to hit copy. In Excel, I'm going to just go back to it and I'm going to hit this plus sign at the bottom just to get a new blank shape. And then I'm going to hit paste. I'll hit control V. I think that works really nicely. <clears throat> and then I just double click to make that bigger. So I want to make a time plot so I'm gonna highlight all of those things I go to insert remember those recommended charts and you can see it immediately does that it puts the years on the bottom it puts the exchange rate on the side and it gives you a couple choices so you can either pick this first one where it's just a line or you can pick this one that has the little dots in it I kind of like that so now I can see it. I also see because of the way I did it it already gave it a title that Makes sense. Maybe if you want to add in there is maybe exchange rate from US dollars to Brazilian reais. That might give it a little bit more meaning, but um, we're done with that one. So that was a pretty quick one. So let's say copy. Let's go back to our Word document. And we'll add some space and hit control V and it brought in our chart. Now we can see when it's its highest, it was 2020. When did it decline the greatest? Well, it only declined once and that was from 2016 to 2017. Number four is similar to number three in that I have two sets of data. So again, I'm going to highlight all the data and it's up to you if you want to grab the X and the Y or not. Copy it, go to Excel. Let's do a new sheet again and hit control V, which is paste. Let's go ahead and hit insert, recommended charts, and you see the one that comes up first is a scatter chart. So often Excel can kind of tell what we're doing or it can match the data that we're looking at. So let's hit OK. It brings in the chart. 
And the scatter plot just plots the data. So think back when you took any kind of algebra course and we said plot the point 3, 4 or the point negative 2, 7. It was just go to the x, y axis and put the points in. And that's what happened here. This is all you have to do. Let's copy it and let's paste it. It says comment on the type, direction, and strength of the relationship between the variables. So again, this is something that we'll talk about later in the class, which is next week, but we'll talk about more. Your data might look different. There's a bunch of different data that's put on these assignments. So I want to show you some choices of what things could look like. So here's some common choices that you can see. I think ours kind of looks like what we saw. So ours didn't look too great, kind of like one of these here. If you look at this top row, these all kind of look like they're going up. So we would say these go in a positive direction. So I'm just going to write positive on top. And if I look at the bottom row, they all look like they're kind of going down. So these would be negative. Then, then as far as correlation, which again, we will talk about later, we would say this was no correlation. This is weak, this is strong, this is perfect. And I would say the same word both up and down. So this is no correlation, this is a weak positive, this is a weak negative, this is a strong positive, this is a strong negative, here's a perfect positive and a perfect negative. So those are the words you would use to describe it. And if it doesn't look like anything, you would say, I don't see any correlation. So I hope that helps. This is our first look at different kinds of statistical graphs. We'll be back later with more.